Hello everyone. Uh, this week we'll be solving this uh, problem further uh, and trying to try to find out the characteristic equation of the circuit. Uh, Nicole solved this problem last week uh, to find out these voltage and current values at t equal to zero and infinity. Uh, those were the steady state values. So let's go further. So this the circuit looks like this for times greater than or equal to zero. Now we know that for the inductor, mm, the current value is governed by this equation. And correspondingly for the capacitor, the voltage is given like this. I made a mistake. We'll have to do that again. The voltage for the inductor is given by this expression. And correspondingly for the capacitor, the current flowing through that is given by C dv over dt. Now, we want to find out the characteristic equation governing the voltage across the inductor and the current going through the capacitor. So if you look at this circuit, the current I1 is flowing this way. Now let's assume for this uh, problem that IL is decreasing. That would mean that the voltage difference across the inductor would have a polarity of positive in, on this node and negative here because it would try to oppose the decreasing value of IL. That gives me my VL. And similarly on the capacitor, because this terminal is connected to the positive end of the battery, this would be positive and this would be negative. Let's call the voltage difference across the capacitor as VC. Now, if I apply KCL at this node, let's call it node A. This would give me incoming current I1, outgoing current IC, and I2. The sum has to be 0. I'll call this A. Further, IL has to be the sum of IC and I2. Let's call that equation B. Now, we'll go uh, along this loop and connect all the voltages across each component. If I ground this node, and if I go across the battery, I get a voltage increase of 7.5 volts. So 0 plus 7.5 as I go across the battery. Now, if I go across the register, there will be a voltage drop of I1 times R1. So minus I1, R1. Similarly, a voltage drop of I2 times R2. And now if I go across the inductor, because I already reason for the voltage difference to be this node to be at a lower voltage than this one, I can directly write, I have a voltage gain of VL. And since I traverse all through the loop, all this voltage drop has to sum to zero. I'll call this equation C. Now if I com compare R2 with the capacitor, both of these components are in parallel to each other, which implies my voltage across the capacitor has to be equal to the voltage drop across register R2. Let's call that equation D. Now what I need to do is, I need to eliminate these variables I1 and I2. So I can have a differential equation only in terms of the voltage variables. How can I do that? Equation D gives me the value of I2 directly. 
which is Vc over R2. Now plug this back into equation C. I'll take I2 times R2 on that side. So 7.5. I made a mistake. We'll need to cut uh, last one minute of this part. So put I2 back into equation number C and take I1 times R1 on the right side. Seven point five minus I two is V C over R two times R two plus V L would give me I one times R one. If you simplify this whole equation, you should get I one is seven point five plus V L minus V C divided by R1. These are the two expressions that we are going to plug into equation A. So we finally need a differential equation either in terms of IL or VC. So what we can do is substitute the values of these I1 and I2 expressions that we found out in equation number A. So if I plug those values in, we find it would be minus of 7.5 minus VC plus VL over R1 plus IC and I2 is nothing but Vc over R2 equals 0. So we need to eliminate these variables Ic and Vl to get a differential equation in terms of the variable Vc. So let's simplify this circuit before, uh, this equation before. Minus 7.5 over R1 minus Vl over R1 plus Ic plus Vc, you can combine these two terms, 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2, all summing to 0. Now, if I use this equation, the governing equation of a capacitor, I can directly replace Ic with the time derivative of Vc. So, I'll plug this here. 7.5 or R1 minus VL or R1 plus CDV over DT plus VC, the sum of two reciprocals of the resistors should sum to zero. Now realize from equation B, my IL is IC plus I2. I2 is nothing but BC over R2. Which implies if I take D over DT of the whole equation, DIL over DT gives me DIC DT plus 1 over R2, DVC over DT. I use this. DIL or DT is equal to D. You have to take a time derivative of this equation. So it becomes C times D or DT of DVC or DT. That's nothing but D squared VC or DT squared plus the same term 1 over R2. dvc 
over dt. Put this expression back into this equation that we had. So we have this equation, let's call it d, and come back to this equation. Look at this term, VL. This is also one of the variables that we need to eliminate. I'll write this expression here, minus of 7.5 over R1. Now, realize that this is the inductor voltage. We can relate that to the current that's flowing through the inductor because VL is nothing but LDI or DT. So let's plug that expression in as well. So that gives me minus of L over R1, DIL over DT, plus C, DVC over DT, plus VC, 1 over R1, 1 over R2, all sum to 0. Now I can replace DI over DT with these two terms here. this becomes the second derivative of Vc. My bad, let's see d squared Vc over dt squared plus 1 over r2 dvc over dt plus c dvc or dt and plus the last term, all summing to 0. Now realize that in this whole expression, the only variable is vc, and that's the differential equation you needed. I'll simplify this here, minus lc over r1, d squared vc over dt squared plus That's the second order term. We have two first order terms. So let's combine both of them. Plus dvc over dt times l over r1 times r2 minus l over r1 r2 and the capacitance plus c. So the second order term is done. Two first order terms are done. Now we are left with the zeroth order term plus Vc into 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus the constant. This is the differential equation you needed. We can simplify this further by multiplying this whole equation by R1 times divided by Lc. Let's do that, just to make the coefficient of the second order term as zero, as one. d squared vc or dt squared plus r1 over lc into l over r1 r2 minus c. times dvc over dt minus r1 over lc into 1 over r1 plus 1 over r2 times vc and the last term 7.5 over lc equals to 0. So this is the characteristic equation which defines how this voltage across the capacitor in this equation changes with time. Thank you for watching the video. Stay tuned for the next one on how to solve this equation to get the resonance uh, and transient values.